Russia, Germany, England. And uh, I am living up here on the north end of Norway, up in the on uh, Aringvasi Island in a fjord here on the northwest coast. The name of the fjord is North Grun Fjord. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So July 2020, a now 20 year old student from Belgium released an amazing application into the SDR and radio community called SDR++. Now fast forward to the end of 2022 and SDR++ has grown massively in features and stability. Now the great thing about SDR++ is that it's cross-platform, supporting Windows, Linux, Raspberry Pi, Mac OS and now Android. Now, while the Android version has been around a few months, Alexandre has pushed a release into the nightly builds. One key fix has been the strange graphical bug that appears to be a thing of the past, meaning more users can now safely install SDR++ onto an Android device. If you are used to using SDR++ on any other platform, then you'll be pleased to know it works just the same on Android. Let's take a look at how we install it. Firstly, within a browser on your Android device, you'll need to go to strpp.org and then tap on the Download Nightly Build button. From here, scroll down to str underscore Android and tap on it. This will then download the latest Android version to your Android device. If it doesn't download, then you need to make sure you're signed in to GitHub. Once the file has been downloaded, you'd notice that it's an archive.zip file. Now to extract the .apk installation file, you'll need to have a free archive extractor application installed on your device, something like this one called Archive, which is free from the Play Store. Open Archive and then locate the newly downloaded strpp archive file. Tap on the strpp underscore android.zip file and the .apk file should be extracted. You should now be able to tap on the apk file to begin installation. Now once complete, you can now start SDR++ on your Android device. The first thing that you need to set is the high DPI scaling. So scroll down the left column until you find it. The default will be set to 300%, so adjust this to your liking. For mine, I set mine to 200%. Please note that you have to close and reopen the application for this new setting to take hold. Now before launching the application again, attach your SDR receiver to your Android device's USB port. This needs to be connected before starting SDR++, unless of course you're going to connect to a remote server. For this example, I will use my HackRF connected to one of my HF antennas. So start the application and then allow SDR++ to access your SDR receiver. Once loaded, hit the refresh button on the source module. Then select from the drop down the type of SDR that you're using. Once selected, press the play button at the top and then SDR++ should come alive and you'll be receiving. Make sure to adjust the gain slider so that you can hear something, then adjust the frequency. As this is running on a tablet, everything is touchscreen, so moving the VFO is just a case of dragging the frequency line across the screen to highlight a signal. As mentioned before, SDR++ on Android is the same as if you was using it on your computer. So the left menu covers everything the same. From modulation to frequency manager, audio routing, waterfall and FFT settings, module manager and rig control server. As mentioned at the start of the video, you can also connect SDR++ to an SDR++ server, which could then be connected on the internet or your home network. A performance of this using Wi-Fi will be dependent on your network's condition, 
but watch out for a future video on how to configure SDR++ server on different platforms. Make sure to be subscribed not to miss those videos. I'd like to say a massive thank you to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. For more information on how to support the channel, please visit the link shown on the screen now. But I'd also like to thank every one of my subscribers and for you for watching. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.